When you see the, I mean, because over the past year, we've seen uh, like three major shifts, it seems to me, or at least we hit the tipping point on, on three major issues. Um, marriage equality, I think in terms of um, uh, uh, women's right to choose, and, and now we're seeing it with gun control, where the, they have now become, uh, they're now perceived at least uh, by the, the center and the center left to be winning political positions in a way that they haven't been, um, well, in some instances ever, but certainly um, um, uh, over the past 10, 12 years. And demographically speaking, it seems like those changes are going to be locked in. In other words, you know, we're not going to see, we're going to see uh, Democrats run uh, harder on a woman's right to choose, and we're going to see uh, the marriage uh, equality seems to be almost off the table at this point as a political issue going forward, I mean, at least in terms of national politics, um, or at least as them, you know, in '04, it was it was a uh, plan by Rove to to help George Bush, and now uh, that that same plan in 2016 or 2012 is essentially would be like a suicide plan in terms of like mm -hmm. uh, Republican aspirations. And now we see the numbers on gun control also uh, change. What's going to happen? I mean, is it going? My my sense is it's going to sort of create an even more pure and virulent strain of this conspiracy, but it's going to be more hermetically sealed, which is going to make it even resonate even more. Well, you know, again, if, if you could, nothing's new, right? So if you go back, you know, we, re, we remember the Roosevelt years, the FDR years, as a time of um, one liberal triumph after another. Roosevelt got elected during a great during this terrible depression. He um, he brought Keynesian stimulus to bear on the economy. He he you know he used all these public works. He rescued the economy. He cre he brought social security into being. He but you know if you actually go back to the 30s and you look at what was going on. The, the left was perpetually disappointed with Roosevelt. He wasn't going far enough. And the, the right was virulent. And what they were more concerned about than just about anything was, you know, that Roosevelt seemed to want to fight the Jewish war in, in Europe. And they wanted to stay out of Europe. And they wanted to, they wanted to take back control of business. They, they thought he was socializing the country. Um, I think we're going, you know, I, I think the culture is changing in ways that are as horrifying for the right now as they were back then, because, you know, demographically and culturally, we're, 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 we're they can't get it back. They, they can't get it back. We're an urban culture. We're a, we're a much more diverse culture. And the, um, you know, and, and, and we're not a gun culture. We're not a frontier culture anymore. Um, but what scares me, I mean, I'm quite optimistic that we're going to be a, a more liberal, inclusive country in 50 years. Um, I'm terrified that the right is going to be using all of the tools of propaganda and disinformation and the political tools of gerrymandering and vote rigging and so on to, to keep power. And um, so things could be very, very dangerous for the left in, in, in the near term for quite a while. Um, be, 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 you know, because, because we're doing so well, we're in such danger. And, um, and again, 
none of this is new. You know, um, G- the, the give me your sense. The, I mean, I, let me just. I'm going to ask you. I mean, give me your sense from a political standpoint because one of the one of uh, my disappointments with the um, with the the, the the so-called left in this country is that on a popular economic in a popular economic sense that it is very much um, adopted neoliberal policies, and I wonder if the. <clears throat> What's happening socially? I mean, certainly President Obama, I think, has moved much further, uh, maybe not in the speed that people had hoped, but he's moving much further on social issues to the left than he is in terms of economic issues. And, 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 and maybe you disagree with that assessment, but I wonder if, the, if what is happening on the right then ultimately puts into play economic issues. I mean, once we have cleared the deck in some respects of, of social issues so that the center is holding on those, uh, does it open up um, the, the question of, of, of a debate on economic issues? Well, I, me on economic issues, um, <laughs> I, you know, I... I think that there's a huge thing going on that dwarfs of of an enormity that dwarfs what the conspiracy theorists fantasize about. I mean, I think we we have capitalism is is so mature at this point that it's not going to grow anymore. I mean, I think the the the, the great capitalist motor of of the um, the developed world is profoundly broken, and I think that it's been really really difficult for a the president the president of the United States, whether he's a Democrat or a Republican, is not yet able to say that. Um, and I don't know. I mean, I think the, the, the economic issues are so big, and um, you know, the United States is in, is in such we're, we're 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 losing our middle class, and the system is working the way it's supposed to work. It's producing a few very high-paying jobs, and a lot of low-paying jobs, and a lot of unemployment. And the the it's doing exact you know, capitalism is designed to maximize returns, and and that's how it works. And um, so capitalism is in a very unsustainable position. And I really I don't know what's going to happen with that. Do you think and that I'm will get addressed more, or do you, do you think that what, what with what's happening in terms of the demographics and the sort of the move to the left, if you will, on social issues, that 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 issue of the 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 failure of capitalism to address what our society needs at this point is going to get is going to be addressed more, or do we going to are we going to see it um, in some way being um, obfuscated by these uh, these sort of these these either the social issues or the sort of the conspiracies that are meant to address you know I mean are we going to see more you know because to a certain extent I've always said that you know without Alex Jones uh, saying that it's a function of you know some type of one world cabal people the, his listeners might actually have to say like hey there's um, interests of there's an aligned interest set uh, aligned interest amongst a certain group of people in society that is far broader than people who are you know dancing around a burning owl or whatever it is um, and uh, that they, th- this is really more of a class struggle than it is a secret cabal. Well, you're right. I mean, I, I 100% agree with you. And again, if you go back in history, why did the czar, why, why did the czar's secret police come up with the protocols of the elders of Zion? Why did they create this document that was meant to turn people's attention to the Jews? Because they were trying to save the czar. You know, there, 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 was a, there was a socialist revolution going on that turned into a communist revolution, and this was one of their propaganda efforts to keep things the way they were. And one of the things that I see right now, you know, our system is failing. It's failing systemically. But at the same time that it's failing, um, 
it's treating one narrow sector of the population very well. And it's interesting because a lot of the people that are doing well by capitalism right now are not right wingers. You know, the the um, a lot of the people that are doing the best economically are also very progressive people mm-hmm. politically. And um, but they're not prepared <laughs> to look past the system as it exists now. And you know, I don't think it's sustainable. And what I worry about is that you could really have, um, with the help of, of conspiracy theory and the help of a of an angry right, you could see kind of corporate fascism. It's something I could really picture happening. Um, on the other hand, you could see um, slowly, um, but maybe faster than you can than you would think in the way that like gay rights happen so much faster than you would have thought 10 years ago, you may start seeing this country looking more and more like European socialism. Um, because, the cap, you know, no, it's not, it's, you know, as people say, you know, socialism isn't the motor for prosperity that capitalism is. But when you have, um, when you don't have a middle class anymore, you can't really talk about this great motor for prosperity, you know, it's not really the one percent. It's like the twenty percent, but it, it's not sustainable if it's just the twenty percent either. We're we're in trouble. And um, and the other funny thing about all this conspiracy theory is that, like, if you listen to Alex Jones from an economics perspective, you know, he's just he's just telling you this recycled crap from a hundred years ago. There's a very there's potential for real downfall right now, and people aren't doing the analysis. So, yeah, I mean, it's 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 we're 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 at a at a hinge point. We don't we don't know which way it's going to go, but we we are really at a hinge point. Well, uh, that's a good point to uh, to end this uh, conversation. Uh, hopefully, uh, hope springs eternal. <laughs> I guess um, Arthur Goldwag, uh, author of the new hate: A history of fear and loathing on the popular right. Uh, appreciate your time today.